Hi folks, welcome back and thanks for joining me today. I'm uh, in beautiful Lake Lahontan in uh, north central Nevada and we're going to be uh, doing some pictures today. I've got a couple friends out here and uh, I'm often asked uh, what kind of film do you shoot or do you always do digital or are you analog and digital? And, well I am actually, uh, they call me a hybrid photographer. I love these classic old cameras and I have today a Nakaoka 4x5 and uh, it's I've got a 125 millimeter lens on it, but we're not be shooting film today. This is a 4x5 camera. I love this because I've got all the movements, the rise, the fall, the swings, and the tilts. But what I'm going to do is put a digital camera on the back of it. And I use a beautiful little Sony NEX7. And that's 24 megapixels. And uh, as a single shot, it does a really good uh, job. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine several images to stitch together later on. And I'm going to use a photo deox uh, sliding back. So you can mount the camera on there and slide it back and forth. So uh, we'll get set up for that. And then I'll show you a little closer uh, look at that sliding back. And here's a closer uh, look at this uh, beautiful uh, 4x5 camera. It's kind of a traditional field camera made of beautiful wood, handcrafted. I just love the beauty of these old cameras. But today we're not going to be shooting film. We're going to be replacing the back of this, taking off the ground glass, and we're going to replace that with a holder, a sliding back to put the uh, little Sony camera on. Now to uh, remove the back, we just pull this up and you see these two springs here. Just kind of pull this up a little bit and this slides right, right out. You see I have this formatted. That's normally a six by nine uh, uh, format that I shoot frequently. But here you'll see the lens exposed and I'll just put on the sliding back now. And this goes in place just like a roll film holder. Doesn't slide under here, but we use these little locking devices. This generally is called a graph lock back because it allows you to change different backs and these little locking devices will hold that in place. So uh, you can use multiple different formats, uh, roll film holders, sheet film holders, or in this case, a sliding back that we're going to do today. And so that, these are up out of the way. We just set this in place. But one thing to notice, you'll see a little groove here. And this little ridge, I'll slip right in there. And then we'll lock it in place. There you go. That looks pretty good. And I want to make sure that we have these on the bottom locked up all the way. And this down here, up the top, that's all secure. And you'll see now that this unit is held securely in place, just like if we were putting... Uh, a roll film adapter on the back. But you'll see here we have the ability to slide this back and forth and also up and down. But of course what we do, we have the camera in place and you'll notice these little dots on the side here. Those will actually help us to, to get in a good position when we're lining up to decide if we decide what format. On the top there's a panorama format and they're actually, we'll take two rows of three. One, two, three across the top, and then we'll lower this, and one, two, three across the bottom. And then after that, we'll take them back to the studio, and we'll uh, stitch those together using Photoshop or any one of a dozen other excellent little programs. So this is, uh, I'll demonstrate basically, if we're going to do the panorama one, we use the red dots. And if we're doing a 645, you know, it's like 8x10 format, we'll use the white dots. White dots are up here, red dots are down here. This unit comes in a couple of different pieces. This is basically a ground glass, this little device here. And that's where you do your framing, your composing, a little bit of focus, but it's really very rough for focusing. We do the fine tuning on the focus when we get the camera in place. Uh, this is just kind of a ballpark figure to see you've got everything level in the way you want it. So let's just, uh, for now, pretend we got the camera in place. And we've got this kind of eyeballed here. And by the way, the lens on this is a view camera lens. And we don't use that uh, the shutter on that lens to actually help adjust the exposure. We just select the aperture that we want to use. In most cases, I use f11. And that's uh, a real good sharp. Uh, but this is almost infinity, so it doesn't matter all that much. But I never like to shoot way down all the way, stop down. I don't like to shoot uh, wide open. but. Uh, once we get the f-stop selected, or we get the focus and everything set up, I'll put that down to f11. And then with the ISO and the uh, the shutter speed, or the, 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 yeah, the speed of the shutter on, we'll actually adjust the focus that way. 
uh, not the focus, but the exposure. Focusing will be done by moving the lens in and out, like traditional view camera. So let's pretend we've got our camera on here. We kind of eyeball things, things look pretty good. We slide this over and we're going to do the panoramic one. So we're only concerned about these red dots. So you see, you get the red dot, red dot, red dot. And then we'll take that shot, pretend we have one, slide it over, two, slide it over, three, and then we'll reposition this. Push this in, you'll see this red dots down here. Push that in, so then we raise this up. And very important that it goes between these two little pins here, these are locking pins, so they'll be perfectly lined up. Now, basically, we're shooting the next roll. So we just leave it where we started, shoot one, then we'll come over here, line those up, two, and three, boom. So now we have two really nice rows, slightly overlap. Uh, some people have said that they have a little trouble getting them perfectly lined up because they you know, don't have a good angle on this. So what they'll do, they'll shoot uh, shots in between too, instead of just one, two, three, they might go one, two, three, four, five, uh, whatever you want to do. Depends on your technique and uh, how things are working for you. So let's go ahead and we'll get that little Sony camera on here now and we'll get that all set up and actually shoot a panoramic of this uh, beautiful dam behind us here. Okay, now we have the little Sony mounted on the sliding back and a couple of things to get this all adjusted correctly. Uh, I use focus peaking, which means that when I'm focusing that lens and it becomes in focus on my uh, uh, sensor, it's going to, everything that's in focus, well, I have it set for red, uh, it'll light up with this red sort of halo all around it. So it makes a really good, accurate focusing. And you can change the color on that, but anyhow, I like to use the red, that shows up really well. The other thing that I have this set at, the camera is set at a two second delay, because you don't want any shaking and uh, uh, you can't use the a cable release because we're not using the shutter on the uh, lens and the camera there. We're just using that to control the aperture. So this, we're just using the camera to adjust the ISO and the um, uh, shutter speed uh, to get the correct exposure. So now you'll see I'm all set up. We're going to do a panorama using these three red dots. We'll take a shot, move it over, and I'll just show you how that works. So the first one, I, by the way, I've already selected my high left limit, my low right limit, and that gives me an idea of what the framing is going to be. Because this over here, this little thing is just a, a real super rough end. So now we'll just uh, shoot this. Okay, and you can hear it when it goes off, I'll get a little closer. And then we just slide it over to the next red dot. And you hear that? Uh, Clicking and you'll, you'll hear the beep, beep, beep to let you know it's getting ready. I'll come in here so you can okay. So now, you see we have the red dot is in that position. So we're going to have to now drop it down. You'd, you'd think that it's the ground, but actually everything is uh, just like a, a view camera. Everything is upside down and backwards. So left is right and right is left and up is down. So uh, we'll slide this now. We're going to drop this. And we're going to get the sky up there. Okay, so we're all set. And now we'll start our next row. We don't have to move anything yet. Just leave that there. Okay, slide it over one more time. And our last one. And that's all there is to it. When we get back to the studio, we can download these images and we'll put them in Photoshop and uh, uh, merge them all together. Now you see, it's, of course, the camera's in this horizontal position. If we wanted to rotate it and shoot uh, a different format, like you might be able to see this one here, six, four, five, like an eight by 10 proportion, what we'd have to do is uh, we're going to change the uh, camera, just loosening this and then rotating it, and we're going to put it in a vertical orientation. Okay. Instead of using the red, what we're going to do now is use the the white. Now you can't see those at the top here, but there there are four of them, and so what we do, we would do one, two, three, four, and then 
reposition the camera. One, two, three, four. So since we're all set up, I think we ought to do that. So again, I'm using a two-second delay. Focus is tack sharp, and I've got my image uh, highlighting with that uh, uh, focus peaking. Just turn this and, uh, okay, slide this over. And you got to be careful you're not moving the big camera. Just, just want to get this slider nice and steady. By the way, if this is awkward for you uh, hitting the uh, shutter release button, uh, this particular camera does not have a way for you to hook up a cable release, but you can uh, uh, use uh, a little remote control device. But I just, I'm so used to doing it this way. Okay. 